this is the lecture for chapter eight, which discusses the cardiovascular system. So this um, body system consists of the heart and blood vessels, such as arteries, capillaries, and veins. So I'll begin with the discussion of the different types of blood vessels, starting with arteries. Um, so arteries are vessels that carry blood away from the heart toward all body cells and artery walls. Oops, sorry, I thought I had a better picture of arteries, but I don't. Um, so you can see the artery here and you can see the three layers of the artery wall. Um, the outer layer is called the tunica adventitia or externa. And this is just the, the thickest layer. It's the outermost layer. In the middle is the tunica media, which is composed of smooth muscle. And that can actually contract or relax to change the size and shape of the lumen, which is the space that runs through the middle of the vessel, like you can see here. Um, when an artery vasoconstricts, that's when the lumen narrows. So that would reduce blood flow. If you have vasodilation, that's the opposite when the lumen gets wider and that would increase blood flow. And the innermost layer is the tunica intima, which is a very thin inner lining, just a si single layer of epithelial tissue. Um, so in general, with just a couple of exceptions, arterial blood is oxygenated, which means that it has a really high concentration of oxygen and it will appear a bright reddish color. Capillaries are the smallest blood vessels that connect arteries to veins, and their walls are very, very thin. They just consist of a single layer of epithelial tissue. Um, so their walls are just the tunica intima, the innermost layer of a vessel. They don't have the other two outer layers. The function of capillaries is to allow for the exchange of nutrients and gases between the blood and surrounding cells and tissues. And then veins carry blood back toward the heart. Veins contain the same layers as arteries do. Um, one unique thing about veins is that they contain valves, which is important to prevent the backflow of blood. In general, blood within veins is deoxygenated, meaning that it has a low concentration of oxygen and it appears a darker, a really dark red or almost purplish color. So the heart itself acts as a pump. It's a muscular pump that um, pumps blood through the entire body. Um, there's two main circulatory routes. Pulmonary circulation is when blood moves from the right side of the heart to the lungs and then returns to the left side of the heart. Systemic circulation is when blood is pumped from the left side of the heart it is sent out to all body structures and then blood is returned back to the right side of the heart. The heart is located within a sac called the pericardium. Um, so that surrounds the, the entire heart. And then the heart wall itself consists of three layers. The epicardium is the outermost layer. Myocardium is the thick middle muscular layer and the endocardium is the thinnest inner lining of the heart. The heart has four chambers. The, um, the two upper chambers are the atria, the right atrium on the right side, left atrium on the left side, and then the inferior chambers are the pumping chambers of the heart. These are the ones that, that contract pretty strongly to eject blood out of the heart. The right ventricle pumps blood to the lungs and the left ventricle pumps blood out to the entire body. Now for the major blood vessels associated with the heart, we have the superior vena cava, which carries blood returning from the upper body into the right atrium. The inferior vena cava, vena cava comes up from below. It carries blood returning from the lower body to the right atrium. The pulmonary arteries are shown here and here. These carry blood from the right side of the heart, specifically from the right ventricle, toward the lungs. 
the pulmonary veins shown here and here. These carry blood from the lungs to the left atrium. And then finally, the aorta. This is the largest blood vessel in the body, and it carries blood from the left ventricle. Um, and ultimately, that blood goes out to all body structures. As far as the valves within the heart, there are two sets of valves. There are two cuspid valves located in between the atria and the ventricles. The tricuspid valve is on the right side, so it's between the right atrium and the right ventricle. And the bicuspid, also known as mitral valve, is on the left side between the left atrium and the left ventricle. Then there are also semilunar valves located at the entrance to the two major blood vessels that exit the heart. The pulmonary semilunar valve is right here at the entrance to the pulmonary arteries. And the aortic semilunar valve is here, located at the entrance to the aorta. Um, so now for the conduction system of the heart, there are um, several structures that are involved in just setting, setting the heart rate, setting the pace of the heartbeat, and then carrying that signal from the atria down through the ventricles. Whenever you have an electrical signal, um, that causes a contraction of the heart. So it's the electrical signal that is causing the heart to pump. When you look at an electrocardiograph, it's a graphic record of the heart's electrical activity. Um, it's what you can see on an EKG. So there's three parts to an EKG. The P wave represents contraction of the atria. Then the sharp spike in the middle, the QRS complex, is represents contraction of the ventricles. And then the last part is the T wave, which is relaxation of the ventricles. So now we'll talk a little bit about blood pressure, which is the force exerted by blood on blood vessel walls. And this is typically measured in arteries, specifically in the brachial artery, which runs through the upper arm. Um, and this pressure changes depending on whether the heart is actively contracting or relaxing. The term systole means contraction and diastole means relaxation. So the systolic measurement is the top number, and this is when the heart is contracting. Remember, systole means contraction. The diastolic measurement is the bottom number, which is measured when the heart is relaxing. So a normal blood pressure reading is about 120 for the systolic number and 80 for the diastolic. So um, these you can read for yourself on the PowerPoint. These are some of the combining forms that are related to this body system and also prefixes and suffixes. So I will um, just take a little bit of time to talk about pathology and diseases related to cardiovascular system. Um, I'll start with arteriosclerosis, which means the hardening of an artery. Atherosclerosis is a little bit more specific. This is the hardening and narrowing of an artery due to an atheroma, which is a buildup of plaque. Um, plaque is made up of cholesterol and other lipids, and that happens within the artery wall. So you can see that here. Um, so when you have arteriosclerosis, the artery narrows, which reduces blood flow, um, and that can actually increase the risk of a blood clot forming in that spot. You can see here how, how much narrower the lumen is compared to a normal healthy artery. Coronary artery disease is any disease that interferes with the ability of the coronary arteries to supply the myocardium with blood. Remember, the myocardium is the, the thick muscle layer of the heart. If there's a complete block of blood flow to a certain area of the heart, that causes a heart attack, which is a myocardial infarction. Um, some other diseases and conditions include an aneurysm. You can see what that looks like here. It's a, a localized dilation, or you can see widening, of a blood vessel. Angina means chest pain. That's often caused by an inadequate blood supply to the heart. 
Arrhythmia is an irregular heartbeat or heart rate. And there's a couple different types. Bradycardia is a slow but regular rhythm. Tachycardia is a fast but regular rhythm. And fibrillation is an abnormally rapid, irregular rhythm. Endocarditis, remember itis means inflammation, so that's just inflammation of the endocardium, which is the inner lining of the heart. An embolus or embolism is a mass, usually a blood clot that becomes lodged in a blood vessel. You can see that here. Hyperlipidemia is excessive lipids in the blood. Hypertension is high blood pressure, and hypotension means low blood pressure. Ischemia is a temporary deficiency of blood flow to a tissue, and that can sometimes lead to the next thing, an infarction, which is localized tissue death or necrosis due to a lack of blood. Palpitation is an irregular heartbeat. Phlebitis, again, we have the itis ending, so that is inflammation of a vein. Syncope is partial or complete loss of consciousness due to decreased blood flow to the brain. And thrombosis is a blood clot. Oops, so just a few procedures, medical, surgical, diagnostic procedures that can be used to diagnose and then treat these diseases and disorders. First, defibrillation is when an electric shock is delivered in an attempt to normalize heart rhythm. Angioplasty is shown here. This is a procedure used to open a narrowed vessel in order to restore blood flow. So you can see what before and after that treatment looks like. And thrombolysis is the destruction of a blood clot using an anti-clotting agent. One diagnostic test is electrocardiography. That's a procedure used to graphically record the heart's electrical activity. Um, lab tests that can be done, a lipid panel is a blood test that measures lipids in the blood. And so it'll measure things like cholesterol, triglycerides, and lipoproteins. And then two imaging techniques Angiography is a procedure that records an image of the inside of a blood vessel. And echocardiography, which is what's shown here, is a procedure that uses ultrasound to record the blood flow through the heart. And lastly, just four um, drugs that can be used to treat heart diseases and disorders, and also blood vessel um, disorders. Anticoagulants, these inhibit the coagulation response to prevent the formation of blood clots. Beta blockers, these decrease heart rate. Calcium channel blockers, these block just what the name says, they block calcium movement in the heart and that will lower heart rate and blood pressure. And statins, these lower cholesterol in the blood.